to be a scion. We're going to be reviewing intravenous access. Now before we start anything, we want to figure out whether we're going to put in an IV lock or have fluids or medication running. We're going to have fluids running so we can put a bag together. So let's go ahead and do that. First I'm going to check my fluid. Sodium chloride. Perfect. It looks pretty clear. Don't see anything floating and the expiration is good for this demonstration. Going to hang our bag up. This port is for medications, so this port is what we want to pull off. And we're going to close the roller clamp on our drip set. On the spike end of the drip set, we're going to pull off the protective sheath and insert the spike into the bag. And I have found that the twisting motion works best. Once we have that in all the way, we're going to squeeze the drip chamber until it fills about halfway full of fluid. Perfect. Next, you want to make sure you have all the appropriate equipment before starting the IV line. Look at that, I got my BSI ready to go, ready to put on. And above that, we have an extension set, the tegaderm, the tourniquet, and the catheter. Now this is a 22 gauge catheter. Normally you want to aim for a 20 gauge or bigger depending on the situation. Next to that we have a normal saline flush 10 milliliters, the chloroscrub scrub wipe, some tape, gauze, and the IV bag and 15 drip set all ready to go. So we have our normal saline here. It's a 10 milliliter flush. Checking the date and the fluid looks fine. So we're going to connect it to our extension set and flush the line. Now it is my preference that I always put together my extension set individually from the IV bag. Stripping out. I know all the bubbles are out so we're ready to move to the next step. And the next thing we want to set up is our tape. So I'm going to pull off two pieces here so I don't have to worry about doing this later. So now we're ready. I'm going to apply the tourniquet and make sure my band is free of the AC. I'm feeling this nice plump vein, so that is what I'm going to go for. I'm taking my chlorus scrub wipe and giving the area a good cleaning. Now I always look at the chlorus scrub wipe or the alcohol wipe to make sure it doesn't have any extra dirt on it. If it does, we're going to grab another one and re-wipe. So now that the site has dried, we can go ahead and unsheath our catheter. Now I'm holding the catheter with three fingers. I'm going to pull traction on the vein because I don't want it to roll. And on the count of three, one, two, three. I'm gonna go in and look at that. I got primary flashback. I'm going to advance the catheter just a tiny bit and then push the catheter forward. Beautiful, so we have primary and secondary flashback going on. Excellent, we are in the vein. So we can go ahead and release the tourniquet and place a tamponade proximal to the catheter site. But just in case if we bleed anywhere, not holding a good tamponade, we'll put some gauze underneath. So we're gonna tamponade and hold on to that catheter sharp spin and connect the extension set. Perfect. So we can go ahead and remove the gauze and push in some saline. And I see it flowing in beautifully, not seeing any bulge coming up like the vein infiltrated we're in. Great. So I'm going to take my tegaderm and place it right over the catheter. Protect that site.
And my tape is already cut. So we're gonna place that right over. And then tape the tail end of the extension set. You wanna clamp the extension set and disconnect the saline. And if you're hooking up IV fluids, very easy, you just twist the end into the extension set and don't forget to open up your clamps and use the roller clamp to establish a flow rate.